Hello everybody, this is Jeannie T with It's All About Yarn, Knit and Crochet. Today I'm going to show you some squares that I'm making. I've never ever made a granny square blanket. Um, well, I've, I've made rose ones with the rose in the center or the flowers in the center. I've never made the plain ones. I might have made a couple of blocks just for a tutorial, but I am making a few of these for Fiber Floozy and uh, Jill at Fiber Floozy. And um, they're more like a bit on the fuller side. There's like not groups of threes and chains. So it has like a crisscross in the center and I did my um, stick you know I have to pull that tight still so there's a little bit of a hole there till I tighten it I only have two ends to darn in on each one so I'm making a pile I live in Canada and Jill lives in the States but I'm going to send them um, possibly the end of this week she asked if we could make some dark blue ones. So I think they're nice. I haven't sent any one blocks before. And they're not fancy. They're just, but they're uh, good and solid. I think she wants them for maybe around the edge. I'm not sure. But they're good to mix in or around the edge. The yarn I'm using is a heavy four. It's like a worsted weight. It's a little bit too light for a five, but it's uh, nice and heavy for a blanket. So I have a few of them, and I'm I'm going to keep making them until the end of the week, and then I'm going to send them off in the mail for her. So I'm going to show you how to make them with white because this blue yarn is really dark. These are from um, these are the millens from Cambridge Fiber. And this could have been a one pounder but it was really long. I don't think it fit the wrapper properly or maybe they had their orders done or out of tags. So anyways, yeah, you get all these different skeins. So I'm going to start off. I'll even throw this one in because it's going to be the same as the blues. So I'll grab the tail in and pull it down through. And that's how I make my see. And that's how I make mine. So then I'm going to chain two. I'm going to lay that across the top. I'm going to chain three which will equal our first double crochet. <clears throat> so we're going to need eight little clusters of double crochet into this slip stitch. So we're going to count this one as our first There's two, and there's three, and then pull them all together. Chain one. So we're going to need eight of those. So there's three double crochets in each. Or I should say, uh, they're going to be clusters, so we... Pull it through once 
and leave that on the hook and then we'll go to make the second one. Pull it through two one time and leave it on the hook. So there's two of them. Go for the third stitch. Pull up a loop, pull it through two and leave that on the hook. So now you have four of them going across. Grab your yarn and pull it through all four. And that's how you make a cluster of three. And then you chain one and that secures it. It also makes a little gap in between. So we need eight sets of those. Throwing yarn everywhere. <laughs> so as you're making a double crochet, pull through two and two only. Leave, leave this on the hook and go for your next double. Pull through two, leave that one on the hook and go for your next double so that you have three of them. Pull it through two again and then you, you should have four one for each double crochet and then one from your work back here. Grab your yarn and pull it through all four and then chain one to secure it. So there's three of them. It was in the 90s here again today. <clears throat> Still into the heat wave. I was actually able to sit outside a few times for a few minutes where this past week I haven't been able to do that at all. It's just been so hot. It was, I think with the humidity it must have been around a hundred or over a hundred. That's with the humidity. The hook I'm using is a size 7 because this is a little bit heavy. It's like a heavy worsted weight. Not sort of in between a five and a worsted. How about a 4.5? <laughs> and I can hear it squeaking. I don't know if it's my hook or if it's humidity. I think it's the hook. It feels like it's uh, a plastic one. It's not a real good hook. I like the metal ones that just slide right through. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more set of three. Wow, creak. And then we'll slip join it in this top. I'm just going to give that a little tug. When I go to darn it, I'll make sure I give it a really good tug then. It's pretty tight. And then chain three again, and that will equal your, fir <clears throat> your first double crochet. Jeannie needs her tea. I'll be right back. Okay, I have my tea, even though it's really hot. So, where we did the chain three, give that a focus. If we look down below, we'll see a set of three here. And there's a set of three here. So this chain of three sort of wedged in here a little bit so when we finish this round we are going to be hooking on to this at the top slip slip stitching into the top of this one so we are going to begin over here and what we are going to do is make two uh, double crochet clusters So there's clusters of three. So there's two. 
and there's three. And then pull it through, chain one to secure it, chain one more because it's going to be a corner. So now we need another cluster to finish the corner. There's one, two, three. Chain one to secure it. So that's a corner. Now, after this cluster, in between this one and this cluster here, in the space, we're going to um, just double crochet four. No chains. They're going to be full stitch double crochets. Four of them. So it's a shell. It's a shell of four. Okay? So we have our corner with two clusters. We have a shell of four. Now in this one we're going to make a corner of two clusters right here to make a corner. And we'll repeat this all the way around. Chain one to secure it. So you have a chain two in between the clusters and a chain one after the last one just to secure it. Now we're going to make a shell of four double crochet into the next space. And now our double cluster corner. Pull through all of them, chain two to go around the corner. So Jill, you're gonna have one white one in amongst them. <laughs> And then a shell of four double crochet. These are a heavier granny square. Now we're going to make our clusters our cluster corner again, a cluster of three double crochets, and then pull through them all, chain two to, to be able to get around that corner, and then another cluster of three double crochets, and just chain one to secure it. Okay? Now, this is the last row. Now, we would have a um, shell of four, but we already have a chain that's counting as one stitch, so we're only, only going to make three double crochets. I like my quick silver hooks that don't stick and creak. And then we'll just slip stitch. These are yarn eaters, being that solid. And then chain three, that will be our first double crochet. And then we're going to go right to the corner and make a cluster corner. They're quite easy. 
just double crochets and chains. Double crochets into clusters and shells. And just chain one to secure it. Now we're not going to make any more shells from this point. So what I do to give it this little line here, I'm going to just double crochet in the back of the loop only. And where we have a cluster of four, that's where we will be making our double crochets. But we're going to also add one at the top of this cluster and this one. So we'll have six. Every row we will have an additional two. And that's how it will get bigger. So we are just going to back loop only. Yeah, this is quite a bulky hook there. So back loop only. I always hold the bottom a little bit for support. Whoops. So there's two, three, four, this is very strong yarn. It's not going to break. That's five and six. And then we are going to make a cluster corner. So there's one, there's two, and there's three and then pull through them all. That's one cluster. Chain two so you can get around that corner. And then make another cluster. Clusters of three. Pull it through them all. Just chain one to secure it. And then we're just going to make six double crochet going across. So go ahead and do that and work all the way around and I will meet you at the end. Okay, so we are nearing the end and I have one, two, three, four double crochets. A chain is five, so I need one more and I'll do it right at the bottom of the chain. So that will make the six double, including the chain and just slip stitch it into the chain. It's nice and it's got the, the lines. You can see it more on the white than you can on the dark ones. And then chain three for your next double crochet and we are going to start in the corner. So we're going to make our cluster of three double crochets, chain two. If your chains are tight, you can chain three, but if they're not tight, two should be okay. I guess it depends if you're a tight knitter or a loose knitter. There's two and three and then pull them all together. Chain one to secure it. So we have six double crochets and we're going to add one at the top of each cluster at each end. So we will have eight this round and we're going to do it back loop in the back of the loop only. That split on me. There we go. There's one, two, three. When I do a back loop only, 
myself, I don't know about you, but I, I just hold the bottom of it just so I don't pull it really out of, out of place, I guess. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is acrylic yarn, a hundred percent, I can tell. And then we are going to make that double cluster corner, two clusters with a chain of two in between. So there's a cluster of three, pull through them all and chain two. Then we're going to make the other cluster of three double crochets. There's one, two, three, pull through them all and uh, I don't think I got my measuring tape here they are exactly seven inches so it's perfect If they were going to be a tiny bit bigger, I would have just used a shorter stitch on the last round, like a single crochet, and uh, it would have made them the right size, but it worked out perfect for a seven inch block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I lose count when I'm talking. That's perfect. So now we're going to do the corner with the clusters. It's two, three, and then pull it through them all. Chain two to get around that corner. Make another cluster of three double crochets. If I put that ball on the ball winder, it wouldn't be rolling all over the place on me. <laughs> and just give the chain one at the end to hold it secure. Now I'm going to make the eight double crochets across. Yes, so go ahead and do this right to the end. So every row that you do has an increase of two double crochets going across. So go ahead and I will meet you at the end. It has a pretty spiral type flower. So I have one, two, three, four, five. This chain to start it would be six, seven, and the last one will be at the beginning, at the bottom of the chain, just before the chain. So that would be the stitch number eight, and then just slip stitch it into the chain. Chain three. And we will get ready for our last round. And if you want to make this block bigger, you can just keep on going. 
you can make one foot squares and sew them all together. This is pretty. Okay, so our last round, we already have our chain of three. Now we're going to start in the corner with our two clusters, a cluster and a chain of two and a cluster. So there's one, two, three, and then pull them all together and secure it. But we're going to have it as a chain of two to get around the corner. Then we'll make the second cluster. Then just chain one to secure it. Now we are going to do a double crochet going across and we should have 10 of them this trip. So there's one, two, three, back loop only. Four, <clears throat> five, six, and seven, eight, nine. And ten. And then we'll be doing our corner with the clusters. So there's one, two, and three. Pull them all together, chain two. It has a piece of moss on the back from the roof of the old house. Do the other cluster. Chain one to secure it and then double crochet all the way across this row. Back loop only and you will have ten of them. It's still almost 90. It's in the high 80s. After dark, every evening, a little parade of skunks comes running across the field. Baby ones and big ones, all stumbling and fumbling and falling over each other and thinking they're going to get some good treats. Just like a pack of little foxes. They only come out after dark. So I don't need to worry in the daytime. I think I need one more. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's the spot. And that's ten. So now we're back to the corner. Secure it. Make 
10 going across. You can make a um, cushion cover with this. You could keep on going and make it all one piece and just make a throw with it. You can make big blocks or small blocks. You can make those purses or the granny square vest. You can make lots of things with this. It's also a good filler, a good filler square. So if you're doing um, a fancy block with flowers, you can like use a flowered square and then you can use one of these and do it back and forth like checkers, piece of moss. See, it's this moss. Sometimes I throw my yarn on, on top of the house <laughs> and the moss gets stuck to it. On to the last, yeah, last corner. Chain two. So go ahead, I'll meet you at the end. So here it is. I made eight. This is number nine. Number 10 is just before the chain. This one here, right before the chain. Remember, back loop only. So that will be 10 double crochets. And then just slip it into the chain. And that's our last row. So I'm going to leave a little bit for darning it in. Just take this and pull it through like that. I guess you can't see. Here we go. Seven inches. Just a couple of tabs under, but you know, just go like that. It's nice. Yes, you can see the design much more on the white than you can with the dark blue. If I tip it, so there you have it a pretty crocheted block. So, until next time, everybody, keep safe, keep cool, and happy yarning. Bye.